Morning, Michaela. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. I can't see you though. Do you want it on? I do. Okay, I'm getting my phone pulled up. No problem. I wonder if you're the only one coming today. Okay, there hey, you are. Yeah, I hope I'm not the only one. Yeah, I hope so too. Although I'm completely able and willing to teach one person. I think that's called a tutoring session. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? Pretty good. How's work going? Pretty good. Um, that's when I got sent home. So we have to go in and get tests, well, not tested, but get our temperature taken and ask us a bunch of questions. William's running the fever Thursday. And uh -oh. so they sent him for seven days, and he's literally slept ever since. He's not had a fever again. He'll wake up and he'll be like, can I have like a peanut butter sandwich? And then go back to sleep. Oh so my he has goodness. a personal doctor's meeting today because I'm not about to go in no doctor's office. Mm -mm. So. Oh my goodness. But he hasn't run a fever again since? Does he feel bad? He says he feels like seasick. He feels like he's on a boat swaying back and forth. Weird. I gave him Dramamine. He said it doesn't help. Okay, well, I don't know what to do for you, bud. My word. Okay, I'm going to ask a personal question. Go for it. How old are y'all? I'm a 19 and he's 21. Okay. I'll be 20. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> when will you be 20, Michaela? August 2nd. <laughs> okay. <sighs> Today is my dog's birthday. <laughs> really? Yep. Oh, my dog, he's right here actually. He's being an attention hog, so he wants to. Oh, him yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but he'll be one next month. One? One. Oh, well, mine's 13 today, so. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know it. <sighs> I've got. Well, one's 13 today, one will be 13 in July, and then one just turns 11 in uh, April, um, March. Have you had them all since they were babies? Yeah. Oh. Yep. So the inevitable is coming. I'm just not quite ready for it. So <laughs> see, it was last year I had a miniature poodle since I was two and he so he would have been, what, 15, 16, and we finally had to put him down. I was mm. so sad. That's awful. I mean, that's the worst part about being yeah. a pet owner. Oh, I made my neighbor take him. I didn't take him. Yeah. Uh, hey, How Alpha. are you? How are you? Doing, doing well. How are you doing? All right. Glad to hear it. Yeah, get doing. What's that, Michaela? I said, I'm glad we have other people coming now. I know. So, Alpha, you're just number two. Oh. I'm a little worried. I, 
I don't know where everybody else is. Maybe like a job or something or taking other classes or so? I don't know. Well, they shouldn't have other classes during this time. Oh, we've got one more. That's always exciting. Yeah, that should be too. Yeah. So, especially on the day before a test. I get a little worried when people skip on the day before the test. We have a test on Wednesday, right? That's correct. Yep. Oh, I'm Today's... worried about this chapter, you know, Miss Robert. Have you been practicing, Alpha? I've been practicing. I've just finished my 3.5 yesterday, but I'm going to take a practice day today too. So, you know, good. But, yep. Yeah. Hey, Emily. Hi. Good to see you. Good to see you. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started because we're four minutes in and there's a lot to get covered today. Um, so I've already pulled up the, um, the notes and um i believe that this is um what you should um i think this is the only thing we did right the slope intercept form right okay that's what i was thinking i couldn't remember between your class and my tuesday class um, um so i just wanted to um so i'm i'm gonna start out with just some terminology and let me say this right at the very beginning if there's something i don't cover um this afternoon i will make a video of it and i will send it out to you in the in the event that i don't get finished today i think i'm going to but just in case i don't um i started making a video and then i ran out of time um over the weekend so um so why am i not receiving those videos uh okay so uh, well, I haven't been sending them to you. I've just been posting them in the YouTube. You just have to go to the YouTube link. They're there. Oh, okay, YouTube. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, because Emily, you found them last night when I resent you that link, right? Yes. Yeah. And that's the same link that I would have sent you guys mm, through the email and all that. Um, I don't think I sent it in an email. I think I sent it in a text message. But if you can't find it, just it, what it is, is it's a link to the YouTube playlist. Okay. Um, and so it just has the videos in that playlist. So if you can't find it, I'm almost positive I sent it in a text message, not in an email. But if you can't find it, let me know and I can resend it out. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, there. in fact, um, Emily had asked me for them. And at first, Emily, let me tell you, I am going crazy. I know I'm going crazy. Um, I've been putting in over 60 hours a week. And so I had totally forgotten that I had um, posted those videos in my brain. I thought I had not. And so, but when I went to the playlist, they were there. So, um, so that's, that's why I acted like they weren't there, but they actually were. So Miss Robert, are you yes. teaching online classes in summer? No way, Jose. Okay. Nope. I am taking the summer off. Um, and actually, Alpha, I, I do normally take the summer off. Um, my I'm supposed to be traveling to Poland for three weeks. Wow. Um, oh. And so, yeah, I ha still haven't heard whether my trip, whether the airline has canceled my flight or not. But um, yeah, I don't usually teach in the summer in any way. Just vacation or family there? Yeah, so my best friend and her husband live there. Okay. So. Um, so that, that was, that's the original plan, whether or not I actually get to go, I don't know, but I can't worry about it because it's out of my control. There's nothing I can do about it and worrying about it doesn't help matter. So that's right. Um, you know, so we'll just wait and see what happens. And, um, you know, if, if I can't go, then I will, I, I typically try to go two out of every three summers. So uh -huh. if I can't that's go, we're planning to, but we can go anywhere right now, you know, where's yep. it? Yep. Yep. So it's just, it's kind of what we have to deal with this summer. So heaven knows I've got plenty of things around here that I can do. I can keep myself busy. I will not be bored. So yeah, that's right. But anyway, okay. So, um, so slope intercept form, just a quick reminder. The reason it's called slope intercept is because M is my slope. And remember that B, this is my Y intercept. Okay, so that's just a reminder of why it's called what it's called. 
Um, whenever you write the y-intercept, make sure you write it as a coordinate. So the coordinate of the y-intercept is going to be 0b. Remember from last week that all y-intercepts have a 0x value. Okay. So whenever I ask you to write the y-intercept, you'll write it as a coordinate. Um, standard form is the next form. By the way, these are all forms of lines, okay? So it's just different ways to write the equation of a line. Standard form of a line is going to be capital A times X plus B, capital B times Y is equal to capital C. So just a couple of things on there. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna just be transparent with you. This is my least favorite form. I don't like this form as much because it doesn't give me any information. It doesn't hand me the slope or and it doesn't hand me the y-intercept. So it's not my favorite just because, yeah, it looks pretty, uh, but that's about as much as it does is it looks pretty. Um, cup two things to note here is that X and Y are on the same side okay. of the equal sign. They're on the same side. And then the second thing to note is that um, you're not allowed to have any fractions and not allowed to have any decimals. So no fractions, no decimals. Ah, but are we going to get all the formula? Do we have to remember or are you going to provide us formulas? That's a good question. Um, I was not planning on providing that for you. Okay. So. so okay. We have to remember that. Okay. Yeah. What was that, Michaela? So you said no notes, but if we remember these in our heads and when we get on Zoom with you, if we write them down, is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. As long as there's no notes out in front of you, as long as you're writing them from your head and not writing them from something you're looking at. Okay. Yep. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. But we can write them on our like a uh, work paper, right? While we're taking case. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Point slope form. Um, again, I'm just going to be honest with you. This is my personal favorite but yet you're never going to be asked to give your final answer in point slope form um but it's my favorite because it's the most useful one it's the one that i use most commonly um this one i used most commonly and then uh number one is the second most common so um and you can see i, I gave you a little note there it's often used to get another form but you're rarely going to use it as your final answer and so the point slope form is going to be y minus y1 and that one is a sub number is equal to m what does m stand for again slope mm -hmm. yep times the quantity x minus x1 so then your m this is the slope like you just said and then the X1 and the Y1, this is a point that you're handed. So hopefully you look at those two things and you go, oh, that's why they call it point slope because you have a point and you have a slope, okay? So the names of these kind of help you to remember what they're used for. Well, not the standard one. That one's just a weird one all around. Um, last week, we talked about the horizontal line and the vertical line. So these, this is review. Um, remember that the horizontal line is always going to be y equals a number. So y equals 7, y equals negative 3, y equals 1, y equals 0. And the vertical line is always going to be x equals a number. Okay, so that's review from last week. Is it um is the is it the vertical line that's gonna be undefined? The slope is undefined. Okay, and the horizontal mm -hmm. slope is zero? That is correct. Okay. And if you remember back, Emily, one of the things that we talked about um in section six, three point six, do you remember talking about the vertical line test? 
is yeah the vertical line is never gonna pass the vertical line test so that's one way to remember that a vertical line has an undefined slope we cannot give it a slope and the reason is is it it doesn't pass the vertical line test okay so that might help to remember which one it is okay all right so the next type of question that we're going to do um, the directions tell us to use slope intercept form to graph, okay? So what you're gonna do, you always, 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 always graph the y-intercept first. Always graph the y-intercept first, okay? And then after you've graphed the y-intercept, from that point, from the y-intercept, count your rise over your run. but your starting place has to be the y-intercept, okay? So in this example then, what is my slope? One fourth. Uh-huh. And then one of the other two of you, what's my y-intercept? And don't forget, we write y-intercepts as a coordinate. Zero, negative three. Uh-huh. So then according to my little instructions up here, the first thing that we're gonna do is graph the zero negative three coordinate. Okay, so we put our y-intercept on the graph. And then from there, we're gonna count our rise over run. So remember that when you're looking at slope, the top number is your rising number your bottom number is your running number. Now, both of these are positive. So that means the top number says I'm going to go up one, and the bottom number says I'm going to go to the right four. Four? Yeah, four. Okay. So again, go back to your y intercept. And from your y intercept, let's rise one. So just go up one. Okay, which is going to be right here. I'm not going to stay there though. And then run to the right four. So one, two, three, four. So this is then going to be where I stay. The nice thing is, is you can do that again. You don't just have, like if sometimes these end up being so close to each other that you have a hard time graphing, although that's not really the case on my lab. You know what, I'm not even gonna say that because you guys are graphing on my lab and you only have to have two points on my lab. So I'm not gonna go any further than that. All right, so now all I have to do is connect the dots, draw the line. Oh, not with the eraser though, hang on. Let's try that again. And now you can tell that I've got my y-intercept and then I uh, got my slope by rising one and running to the right four. Okay. Questions? Miss Robert, I'm just yes. saying, okay, please don't mind it. So if I want to write it the second one as a pair, I could write it down as like a four negative, uh, four negative one or two, something like that. Four negative two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, four negative two, right? Okay. Yep. That's my second pair, right? If I had to find that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I'm going to change the directions a little bit on this one. Because if I give you an example like this, I will not ask you to use slope intercept form. I will ask you to use intercepts to graph, okay? So I'm gonna change the directions because of that's the only thing I would ask you to do. Do you see how number 10 is written in standard form right now? Excuse me? Yep. Standard form, I will only ever ask you to graph it using intercepts, okay? That's the only way I'm gonna ask it of you, okay? So we'll just put in a, um, a, set of directions here 
use intercepts to graph. Now, remember that my intercepts, one of them always has a zero for X and the other one always has a zero for Y. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to set up an XY chart. And on one time, I'm going to plug in a zero for X and I'll solve. And on the other time, I'm going to plug in a zero for Y and I'll solve. Okay. So let's take our equation then. And let's plug in a zero for X first. So we have a three times a zero minus four times Y equals four. So we're plugging in zero for X and you can tell that the whole entire first term is gonna go away to zero. Divide on both sides by negative four so that Y is equal to negative one. We'll put that in your chart and we can also put it on our graph. So my Y intercept is going to be at zero, negative one. So when you're doing equations like this, you can plug in any number. Mm -hmm. so like except, this yeah, that's true, Emily, except if it says intercepts, you have to plug in zero. Okay. But if it doesn't say anything about intercepts, you can plug in any number you want to. Okay, so it doesn't like have to equal the four? Um, what do you mean? Like, you don't have to like plug in a number for three and then a number for four, like where it's all gonna equal out to be four. Mm -mm. You don't have to do any figuring. All you have to do is pick a number and plug and chug. Okay. Ms. Robert, what are the okay. easiest number to plug in, you know? Zero. Okay, and then one and like that? Yep, yep. But again, let me say it again. If it says to use intercepts, you have to plug in zero for X and you have to plug in zero for Y because those are gonna give you your X and Y intercepts. Okay, but if it doesn't say anything about intercepts, the sky's the limit. You can choose whatever you want to. Okay. Okay, all right. So now let's go and do our second coordinate. We're gonna plug in zero for Y. This one's gonna be a little uglier. It's okay, we're not gonna die. Um, so if we plug in a zero for Y, that's gonna be three X minus four times zero is equal to four. The whole second term is gonna go to zero. And we will divide on both sides by three. So that my X intercept is at four thirds. This is a little uglier to graph. Emily, did you notice that in the playlist? Um, I have a video in there that is not my video and it's how to graph your own coordinate in my lab. Yes, I saw that. Did you watch it? No. Okay, so I have placed a video in the playlist that actually shows you how to graph um, like ugly things on my lab. And so you can actually go in, if you haven't figured this out yet, you can actually go in and you can choose your own coordinate to graph on my lab. So um, we'll go ahead and do this one on paper and I'll, I'll sort of explain it to you, but it's easier if you see what they're doing on my lab. And so it's actually, it's a, it's a good video. Um, four thirds is the same thing as one and one third. So my x-intercept then, if this is one and this is two, one and one-third is a little bit past one, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you can't be accurate on my lab unless you type in the actual number four-thirds, okay? And so what'll happen is you'll graph your first coordinate like we did, that zero, negative one. And then you'll just graph a random, second coordinate. You don't care if you're right on it. 
random second coordinate, and then there's going to be a little place on your graph that says you can edit your coordinates. It's a link. And so if you edit your coordinate, if you go in there, you can actually type in what you want your coordinate to be. And so that second random one, again, put it anywhere in the world you want to, go in and edit it, and you can put the x value of four thirds and the y value of zero, and it'll automatically put it where you want it, okay? So that you don't have to have any guesswork on it. Try it, if you get stuck, then go watch that little video that I, um, that I uh, provided. Okay? But that way you don't have to just guess, so where exactly is one and one third? I know approximately where it is, but I don't know exactly where it is. Okay? Any questions on that? All right. So next. Wait, what was I? Yeah, uh-huh. Next question. So this time we're supposed to find an equation. Notice that the form we're supposed to put it in is standard form. Okay. I'll deal with that in a minute. Right now, though, I'm not worried about that part. So take a look at what you've been given. You've been given, what's that called? It's a slope. And then you've also been given this. What do you think that's called? Don't think too hard. Two pairs, ordered pairs? It, it's a point, yeah. Yeah. An ordered pair, a coordinate. Okay, now, so listen to what you just told me. You were given a slope and you were given a point. So which form do you think you're gonna wanna start out with? Low formulas. Which one? Low formula, y2, y1, like a y minus, y2 minus y1. X. No, nope. Slope. Yeah, the one that's point slope. Okay, you have a point, you have yeah, a slope, I mean, oh, so use 24? point slope. Oh, we, um, we're on 24, right? We're on number 24, yes. Okay, sorry then, yeah, yeah, I was looking at 32, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay, that's all right. So, um, so this one says y minus y1, I'm just copying it down, okay? I'm not even doing any math yet. Is equal to m times the quantity x minus x1. Okay. So in for the m, we'll put a four. All right? Mm -hmm. In for the x1, what are we gonna put in for x1? One. Uh-huh. And what are we going to put in for y1? Three. Okay. Because that's my point. Now, keep your x's and your y's. That plain x and that plain y, keep them where they are. So we're just going to copy those. So this will be a y minus a three is equal to four times the quantity x minus a one. I'm keeping my symbols in there as well. Okay. Now, but let's look at the directions. The direction said that we're supposed to write in ax plus by equals c form. In other words, I need my x's and my y's on the same side. That's the big deal. So what you want to do now is you just want to start manipulating your equation to get your x's and your y's on the same side. Now I can't move x's yet, okay? What do I need to do before I can start moving any x's? The big D word. Distribute. Yeah, I need to distribute my four. Okay, make life a little easier. So we're going to have a y minus a three is equal to four x minus four. And again, you can see x and y, these guys have to be on the same side that C has no letters, so that's a constant number. So that means my X's and Y's all need to be on one side and my plain old numbers need to be on the other side, okay? So if I want X's and Y's on the same side, how are you gonna do that? We subtract four X from both sides. Subtract four X from both sides, I'm okay with that. So if I subtract four X from both sides, this is gonna be Y minus four X. 
I still have my minus three equals a negative four. Okay, and then I've got one more step to do to make it look like that standard form. What's the last thing I need to do, Emily or Michaela? What is the last thing to do? Get rid of the three. Yeah, and so how would I do that? Add three to both sides. Very good. So I'm gonna add three to both sides. So this will be y minus four x. Um, if you have a negative four plus a three, that's a negative one negative four plus three. Okay, and so now you can see that um, what I have right here matches this form. Maybe you say, yeah, but Miss Roberts, the form says that X's are supposed to go first. Is what we have okay? And it is, it's just fine. Okay, as long as the X's and the Y's are on the same side, I don't really care if X goes first or if Y goes first. Okay. All right, let's head into number 32. So my directions are still the same. I'm supposed to find an equation um, and I'm supposed to put it in standard form, all right? So um, unfortunately, I don't have a form that says point, point. I only have a point slope. But the good news is, and Alpa had already, um, had already told us this, the good news is we know how to find slope. We did this last week. So this one's going to come in two stages. Stage number one, let's go find the slope. And then stage number two, we'll write our equation. Okay, so if we're gonna find the slope first, remember that it's my y's that go on top because it's rise over run. And from last week's lesson, remember we do y value minus y value, okay? So would you rather do two minus eight or would you rather do eight minus two? Eight minus two. Yeah, and honestly, it doesn't matter. Just remember that the partner has to go first on bottom. So um, if I'm gonna do eight minus two on top, what do I have to do down on the bottom? It has to match. It has to match. So what am I gonna write down? Eight minus six. Eight minus six. Mm -hmm. X value minus X value. So then this is going to be um, a six on top, a two on bottom, which is just going to be a three. Okay, so now take a look at what I have now. I have my point and I have my slope. And you say, but Miss Roberts, you don't have a point. You have two points. Okay, but you still have a point. So the deal is, is pick the point that you want to work with and stick with it. It doesn't matter. Really, at this time, this question isn't any different from the last question where I had a point and a slope. Okay, so I've got a point. Yeah, I got two. Okay, just pick one. And I also have my slope. So let's use point slope since I have a point and a slope. Okay, so we're, we have, I'm just going to write down the formula. Y minus Y1 equals m quantity x minus x1. By the way, the more times you write that down, the more you're gonna accidentally um, memorize it, okay? And so um, I guess my first question is which point, uh, let's see, Emily, you get to choose. Which point would you like to choose? The six two or the eight eight? Six two. Okay, and why did you pick that one? Um. I guess because it's not the same number. Yeah, uh, you know what? Whatever you said, I'd be like, oh, okay. I'm good with that. Um, so it doesn't matter. Um, I would have chosen six two because the numbers are smaller. Okay, so that's it. Um, but it doesn't really matter why you choose it. Um, so we have y minus, let's see, we're gonna choose, I'm gonna write this down here. We're gonna choose the coordinate six two. So y minus, what's my y one? Uh, a two is equal to m my slope which is three 
times x minus my x value. Six. Yep. Yep. So this is my line equation. I'm just not allowed to leave it like this because the direction said that I had to use standard form. Okay. So, um, so let's go ahead and start cleaning it up then. Um, so first thing, how will I go about cleaning it up first? Distribute. Okay. So we're going to distribute and let's see, I need to come up to the next column here because I'm running out of room. So we have Y minus two is equal to, let's see, Michaela, can you distribute that for me? Three X. Uh-huh. And then I don't want to be wrong. That's okay. Negative 18. Yep. Always good to check your work. So again, you want your X's and your Y's on the same side and you want your plain numbers on the other side. Okay. So let's see here. Alpha did it for us the last time. Emily, um, what would you do first to start shifting things around? Okay, I'm going to do, um, we'll get guys 12, so we'll get one I'll be back shortly. Okay. Everybody go take Bo out for a run. Okay. And then you'll be back inside. Okay. Well, I don't mind telling me she was going. That's okay. Um, Let's go. Uh, three, eight. <laughs> Sorry, say it again, Emily. Um. So the question was, is how do you want to start shifting things around so that your X's and your Y's are on the same side and your numbers are on the other side? Make the three X. Okay. And how would you do that, Emily? By what operation? Subtraction. Good. Good. So we're going to subtract three X on both sides. So that I'll give us a, oops. A y minus a 3x minus a 2 equals a negative 18. Okay. And then, Emily, what else would you do for your last step? Um, move or add the 2. Yeah, yeah. Yep, so you're gonna have y minus 3x is equal to a negative 18 plus two should be a negative 16. Okay. So then we have that then in the proper form. All right, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Let me ask you something. What if the directions didn't say write your answer in standard form? What if the directions has said write your answer in slope intercept form? You still could do that y plus mx plus b. So we can do the y is equal to like a 3x and just uh, b is going to be negative 16. So yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So you could either take um, this line that I circled here or the one that um, Alpa was talking about that line um, and just get it into y equals mx plus b form. So if you had been asked for slope intercept form, you would have had y equals 3x minus 16. Okay, so just pay attention to the directions. Both of these are correct answers, but only one of them um, does what the direction says. Okay, and sometimes, sometimes you'll be asked for standard form, and sometimes you'll be asked for slope intercept form. What was that, Alpa? Miss Robert, like when we change in the direction, do we have to define everything like we negative out like 3x and 16 this way, or we can write just secondary y is equal to 3x? Yeah, that's fine. I just was showing you what my brain was doing. So we can do that, right? Directly? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, okay, I got to tell you, I think these are my favorite, favorite, favorite questions in the whole entire chapter, okay? Um, because they look really complicated, but they are so easy, but you got to practice them, okay? 
And all of these examples, let's see, there's, um, there's four of them. These all go back to, let's, let me take you back to the first page of notes. These go back to the horizontal line and the vertical line, okay? So you gotta remember that the horizontal line is always gonna be a Y equals a number. The vertical line is always gonna be X equals a number. Okay, so keep that in your mind, or at least keep this out handy while we're going through the next four questions. Um, but these, I, I love these. Okay, so it says to find an equation of the line. And for number 40, our line is supposed to be horizontal, and it's going to go through the coordinate 1, 4. Okay, so let's just deal with the horizontal part first. If I have a horizontal line, is it going to be a y equals a number or an x equals a number? Y. Horizontal line is which one? Y. y. It's going to be y equals a number. Okay. So let's go ahead and just write that part down first. It's going to be y equals something. All right. Now you ready for this? Because if you blink, you're going to miss it. Which piece is the y piece on the point? Four. Four. Yep. There you have it. That's all there is to that one. Mm. I know, kind of cool, huh? It's like so easy that it's easy to miss. Okay, let's do another one. Let's do another. Let's drop right straight down to number 42, right underneath that. Okay, so forget the coordinate for a minute. Let's just talk about the fact that it's a vertical line. So what are all vertical line equations? How do they all start out? X. Yep, X equals a number. Okay, now go to your point. Which piece is the X? There you have it. Can our whole test just be these questions? Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Um, but no, and that's because that won't get you ready for Math 102. <laughs> And I'm not going to have your math 102 teacher blaming me because I did not teach you all the math. <laughs> okay, let's do another one. This one I'm going to make a little bit more challenging though. So number 48 says that I'm going to write the equation of a line parallel to y equals negative 4. Okay, now the first thing I want you to ask yourself, what does y equals negative four look like? Is this a horizontal line or is this a vertical line? Horizontal. It's horizontal. Now, if I've got a horizontal line. It's always opposite, right? What kind of line is gonna be parallel to a horizontal? What kind of a line is parallel to a horizontal? The horizontal line, the y is equal to negative three. Another horizontal, right? I mean, think railroad tracks, okay? So if they're parallel, they're never going to touch each other. Well, if one of them's horizontal, the other one has to be horizontal. So if one of them was y equals, the other one has to be y equals. And like Alpha said, the only y value I have is negative three. So that's going to be the equation of my horizontal line. So that one's a little bit more challenging. Not much, but a little bit more. Okay. All right, look at the next one. Okay, let's see here. Michaela, what kind of line was I given? Um, a vertical. It's a vertical line. Okay, so verticals, these go up and down, don't they? If I have something that's up and down, what kind of line is going to be perpendicular to a vertical? Another vertical. Okay, another vertical would be parallel. Horizontal, it crosses over. Right, I want perpendicular, so it has to meet at a right angle. Does that make sense, Emily? Mm -hmm. Okay, 
And so since it's horizontal then, it has to be y equals, and in this particular case, it's gonna be y equals what? Q. Yeah. So it takes some thinking. I, yes, they're easy, but you do have to think through it. So again, the process was, first of all, ask yourself, what kind of line do I have? Secondly, ask yourself, okay, what kind of line is going to be parallel or perpendicular to that? And then thirdly, figure out what kind of equation you want. And then last, figure out which of the numbers you're going to use. Okay, any questions on those? Again, I, I really like those because they look harder than they are. All right, but they're actually not very difficult. They do take some, um, some practice. The okay. way I remember, like, you know, x axis is always horizontal, so y is right now opposite. That's the way I remember, you know? Okay, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, let's look down at number 52. Okay. So it says to find an equation of the line, and then we're supposed to put our answer in slope intercept form. Okay, now again, guys, don't pay attention to what your answer has to be until you're ready to finish it up. I don't really care what it says about this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the form that's best for me according to what I've been given, and then I'll worry about putting it in the right form for my answer, okay? So when you look at this, what are the two things you were given? What's, what's the name of this guy? And if you can read, you can get it. Slope. It's a slope. And then what's this guy? Or a bit, or a name. Okay, or a point, right? Yeah. So since I have a slope and a point, let's use point slope. Yep. That's how you decide which form to use, okay? So if I'm going to use point slope, that's the one that says y minus y1 equals m times quantity x minus x1. Again, the more times you write it, you will accidentally memorize it. If you can keep making yourself write it. Okay, so now let's go plug in all the junk that we need to plug in. So we've got y minus, what's my y1? Okay, so this is going to be y minus negative 3 is equal to, what's my slope? Over 7. Okay. Times x minus, what's my x1? 0. Yep. Now, write this minute. Am I satisfying how I'm supposed to write my answer? Is it in slope intercept form? No, it's not. No. It's not. So now is where I have to start getting it in slope intercept. Do you remember what slope intercept form looks like? Y is equal to mx plus b. Mm -hmm. Y equals mx plus b. So that means get y by itself. That's really all that means. Okay. So we'll start cleaning this up. This is going to be y plus 3 equals, let's distribute our 5 sevenths, 5 sevenths x. I'm not even going to write down minus 0 because who cares about writing down minus 0, okay? And then I'm getting close. I still need my y alone. So let's just subtract 3 on both sides. So that'll be y equals 5 sevenths x minus 3. And now it's in slope intercept form. Okay. All right, let's look at 66. All right, let's read through it first, and then we'll decide what to do. So it says that I want a line 
that's going through the coordinate 0, 12, and it's perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, where is the x-axis? Can you show me with your arm where the x-axis is? Yep, okay. So if I'm perpendicular to that, what kind of a line is perpendicular to something like this? Vertical. A vertical line, right? What kind of equation do all vertical lines have? What's the equation of all vertical lines? X equals a number. Yep. So we're going to write down X equals. And then our point will tell us what number I'm going to be equal to. So I'm going to equal what? Zero. Yep. Pick the X value. Okay. Can I give you a little hint on this one? I can't even follow the directions on this one. See how it says to write it in slope intercept form? Mm -hmm. That's not even possible. That's okay. That's okay. It being a vertical line, um, it trumps uh, the slope intercept form. Okay, so it wins. Vertical line and horizontal line equations, they win. All right, so I can't write it in y equals mx plus b form. That's just not even possible, and that's okay. All right. All right, let's look at number 60. I think you're going to like this one. So first of all, ask yourself, read through quiet um, to yourself. What were you handed? And then according to what you're handed, ask yourself, which form are you going to start out with? So Emily, what do you think? Which form are you going to start out with? Uh, um, y minus y1 equals x, or equals m, and x minus x1. Okay, so that one's point slope form, and you are more than welcome to start out with that. Did anybody think of something different to start out with? Oh, I just put that it was a horizontal line, so the y would equal negative 4. Hmm. Okay, so, Michaela, I know you really like those questions, but you can't make all of them into those questions. Yeah. So, um, Michaela, here's how I know it's not horizontal. My slope is negative 2. Negative two. Remember that a horizontal line always has a slope of 0. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So here's what my thought is. And Emily, I'm totally fine with what you said. What you said was correct, but there's an easier way. You know that you've been given a slope, right? You were given a point, but more specifically, you were given a y-intercept. So isn't one of your forms slope-intercept? Then we can use slope-intercept. Okay, now Emily, if you use point slope form, um, you'll have to do a little bit of extra work, but you should still land in the same place as long as you do your math correctly. Okay, so if I'm going to use point, I'm sorry, if I'm going to use uh, slope intercept form, that's going to be y equals mx plus b. And my m is negative 2. My B is negative 4. And the direction said to put it in slope-intercept form, it's already there. Okay? So I don't have to do any extra work to get it there. Any questions? Have I lost you? Are we good? I would, okay. Um, <coughs> I think my thing is, is like, how would we know exactly what form, like throughout the whole three point, so three chapter, how would we know exactly what formulas to use? Yeah, it's a great question, Emily. And that's when you're gonna look and ask yourself first what you were given. 
since you were given on this question, since you were given a slope and a y intercept, I would use slope intercept. Okay. okay. If you were given, so look at number 52. Uh, Honestly, Emily, we did 52 um, the hard way. Because I, I, and it didn't even occur to me until I'm just now looking at it. That was also slope and a y intercept. I didn't have to use point slope form. I could have done the exact same thing that I did on number 60. And notice but, what it would have been it would have been y equals 5 sevenths x minus 3. Oh, that's what we got. But you will accept like either or, right? On a case? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah, 52, Emily, I really should have done that one in slope intercept form. It would have made my life a little bit easier. Look at the difference in how many steps there are. Mm -hmm. Just to right? Yep. So it's definitely easier if you pick the right form. So if you've got a slope and you have a y-intercept, go with slope-intercept. If you have a slope and a point that's not a y-intercept, go with point-slope. Okay. All right, let's slide over here to number 68. So Emily, I'm gonna ask you, what were the two things that you were given? Uh, slope and um, a point. Yeah, and is that point a y-intercept or a non-y-intercept? A non-y-intercept. Right, so I can't use slope-intercept form here. I have to use point-slope because I was given a point and a slope. Is, is that helping with knowing which form to choose, Emily? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. So then we've got y minus, what's my y1 on this? Four. Mm-hmm equals what's my slope uh oh i forgot to write down my formula see we were accidentally memorizing it and i forgot to write it down what's my m negative two fifths okay times the quantity x minus x1 and michaela what's my x1 four yeah okay now from here i have to clean it up the directions tell me that I should end up with y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute. So you'll have y minus four equals negative three-fifths x. What is negative three-fifths x times negative four? Twelve over five. Positive? Positive twelve over five. Yes. Okay. And then I need to add four on both sides. So we have negative three fifths X. What is a 12 fifths plus a four fifths? I'm sorry, what's a 12 fifths plus four? 32 over five. Mm-hmm. Looks like I have just one more question. Um, I want to walk you through something before I do this last question. Um, because I can't remember if you're going to run into this on your test or not. Um, you might very well run into it on your homework, though. So it's important that you understand it, at least for your homework's sake. This is a good answer since I was asked for slope-intercept form. What if I was asked for standard form on this. Okay, so remind me again, what does standard form look like? Y is equal mx b? Uh, no, that's slope intercept form. A oh, ax plus b y is equal c. Yes, so I've gotta have x's and y's on the same side, okay? So what would I do then to, to get x's and y's on the same side? You subtract 350 x on both sides. 
So I would add three fifths X to both sides, not subtract, but add. Yeah, you're right. Add, sorry, use a negative. That's okay. So I would have Y plus three fifths X is equal to 32 fifths. But do you remember the second part of the requirement on the standard form? Not only did X's and Y's have to be on the same side, but what was the other part of the requirement? No fractions. No fractions. No fractions. Now we've done this. It's been a while. It was back in chapter two that we did this. So it's been a long time since we've done this. So what you're going to do here, what's your common denominator? Five. Yeah, it's a five. So you're going to take the whole entire equation and you're going to distribute your common denominator to all three pieces. Ooh. Okay, we did this earlier in the semester. So this is a good time to review it since it'll be on your exam. Okay, so when you take a five and you pass it to the Y, what's your first term going to be? Five Y. Five Y. Tell me what happens when you pass a five to your second term. Five cancel out? Yeah, my fives are going to cancel. What's the only thing left over when your fives cancel? Three X. Yeah, a positive three X is equal to, and again, when you pass a five over to the 32 fifths, you're gonna have fives cancel. What's the only thing that's gonna be left? 32. Yeah, and so what you have now is not only do you have X's and Y's on the same side, you also have no fractions. Yeah, and we have standard form. That's correct. That would be, now you weren't asked for standard form on this question. I just wanted to show you what to do if um, you were trying to get standard form and there were some fractions in your question. Okay. For our set of directions, uh, this first guy was actually the final answer. For this set of directions that was written. Okay. Again, I just wanted to show you what to do if you were asked to get standard form and you had fractions in it. What do you do to get rid of it? Okay. Okay, so um, one more question. One more question. Okay, so read through it. Now, I want you three to um, just kind of walk yourselves through it in your mind or on paper and see if you can come up with the correct equation. So don't, you don't have to say anything. All right, so let's read through it. It says that we want a line that's going through the coordinate one negative five, and our new line is gonna be parallel to the y-axis. All right, so let's start at the end. What does the y-axis look like? Horizontal line. Okay, um, the y-axis? Vertical. No, the vertical line, y-axis. Yeah, it's vertical. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So the y-axis is a vertical line. I'm told I want something parallel to my vertical line. So if I want something parallel to this, what kind of a line is parallel to a vertical line? A vertical, vertical line. Another vertical line. Absolutely. Okay, so what's the equation of all vertical lines? X, X, X equals the equal. number. Yep, so we're going to choose X equals... One. One. Okay. 
So again, that one, it takes some thought, it takes some practice, but they're actually easy ones after you've had some practice. Okay. Um, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, the test, did you guys get my email about the test? Yes. Okay, have you read through it carefully? Yes. So um, just as a reminder, like um, there are, uh, there's a statement on that test that says something like, um, if you don't show the work, you don't get the credit, even if you get the answer right. Okay, so you got to write down everything. Um, let's see, what's different? Oh, there is going to be some factoring problems on the test, you know, like factoring from chapter six. Okay, so you are allowed to bring the factoring map with you. Um, it's totally fine uh, to, to have the factor. Uh oh, we lost Alpha. Um, so you can have the factoring map with you um, in front of you, but you will not be allowed to have your notes for this test. Okay, so what about ones for like number 62 where there wasn't really any work to show? How do you want you're, us to do that? No, you're, you're exactly right, Michaela. So um, I would call this probably a one or a two point question. And in that event, when there just isn't any work to show, then I'm not going to hold you to that. Okay. Yeah. You're right. You're right. And I, I forget about these types of questions. Because they're not, there's not a ton of them. The whole test is not made up of these. <laughs> oh. Any other questions that you have? Alpa, you're back. We yeah, lost my you. My internet was down, so. That's okay. That's okay. We didn't say a whole lot, Alpha. You didn't miss anything. Okay. Um, do you have any other questions about the test? Did you guys see that um, there is a practice test available? Yeah. And did you also see that I reopened all of the practice tests so that you guys can start studying for your exam after this test? Right, on calendar May 2nd, right? Yep, yep, I put them on the calendar. I put them for May 2nd so you could easily get to all of them. Right. Okay. So you only worry about the practice test for chapter three right now, um, but then after Wednesday, you'll want to start thinking about thinking through the practice test for all the other ones so that you can study for your uh, exam. Do you guys have anything else? <laughs> Miss Robert, before yes, you have a question, okay, please don't mind it, but uh, it's kind of funny. You know, there's like an axis, like a vertical line, parallel through and all that stuff. If we make a mistake and you fly right like a both ways, will you accept and give us a half and half credit? Okay, Alpa, you, you talk too fast. I did not understand what you said. Can you try that again? <laughs> okay. <laughs> You know, like question number 40 and 43 and all this stuff like okay. going to Yes. Yeah, just Four, like that. 40, 42 these? Yeah, like a 40 to 40, uh, 42 like this. If yes. we get confused and if we write the other way both ways, will you give us like a half and half credit or you won't even give us credit? Nope. No, Alpha, you can't give me two answers and make me choose. You have to be the one to choose. Okay. So if you put two answers down, Alpa, you need to cross out the one that, or cir either circle the one you want to keep or cross out the one that you don't want to keep. Okay. So I understood very well, like a 40 through like a 50, uh, is a 40 and 42, 48 and 50. Okay. The second, last one, I was a little confused about. Like number 62? Yeah. Okay. So Alpha, what does the Y axis look like? Y axis is vertical, right? Okay, so vertical. And then you're told on this one that you want something parallel to this. So okay. parallel means that I'm never gonna touch it. Right, it's a vertical also again. Also vertical. 
What do all vertical equations look like? Oh, that's what it is. The equation, that's what we have to, yeah, I got you now. Like X is horizontal, the opposite of the vertical. So X equals a number. And since our X is one, we're going to choose the one. Okay. Did that help? Yes, yes, I got it. Perfect. Now it says equation over here, but it doesn't say equation. That's what I was confused about. Up in the directions, it says find an equation. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was just confusing about. I gotcha. Any other questions? Thank you. I do have a question on the homework. It gave me like at the end, um, I don't remember which one it was, but it gave me equations like, I think it was like six minus 18 over like two minus four. Yeah. And I was really confused. I was like, I don't know what this has to do with graphing. Is this going to be on the test? I mean, it was really easy questions, but I was confused. So it might have just been um, a review, a couple of review questions. Okay. I mean, like you didn't have to, you just had to simplify? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a review question. So those won't be on our test? No, but I did put, again, I put chapter six factoring questions on your test. And we have to have some like a graph paper with us, right? During the case? Nah, you don't have to. Oh, we don't have to? Okay. No. We do, right? When we if, if, no, 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 no. The only thing that you have to print out is the factoring map. Okay. But you probably already have it for the last test as long as there's nothing written on it. Right, right. Yeah. So you don't know because all of your graphing alpha is going to be on my lab. So if you want graph paper, you can have it, but there, you won't have to turn in anything with graph paper. Okay. I was getting I, there for a minute. I got confused because my trigonometry class, they do have to turn in a graph. And so, but that's not you guys. That, that's my other class. <laughs> okay. Yep. So yeah, yep. all of your graphing is going to be done on the computer. Right. On a mind map. map. Correct. Oh. Okay. All right. Yes, ma'am. Let's see. We hope. Do good some, right? Yeah, absolutely. Anything else? Nope. Now, don't spread any rumors that I'm letting you guys out early. <laughs> oh. <Are> you okay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you have any questions, you know you can always text me, okay? Sure. All right, guys. Well, I will see you on Wednesday for um, the test. And we do the same thing that we did last time, keep phone on and like that, right? Yep. So that's all in the um in the email I sent. Oh, you said okay. All right. All right. I'll check. Yep. And I think I sent that email. Oh goodness, Friday yep. or Saturday. Mhm. Mm so and it's got the new code because we're not using the same code. It's a different code for test day. Mhm. Mm so it's got your new code and it's got how you'll set up your phone with Zoom so that I can see your workspace and you'll have your computer on the on my lab. And all right. that good stuff. Right. Yeah. So just go go through. I, I know the email's really long, but it has everything you need in it. Okay. And we, we don't have to sign the honesty thing again because we already did it, right? <laughs> right. Um, but I did. So I don't know if you guys noticed this or not. They were different. The one that you had to sign to get into the test said that um, everything you did for the course would be um you would be honest about it but the one that was actually on the inside of the test said everything on this test yes. is my own and so the second one i put it on the test again okay. okay so before we take a taste we just go through that one um no it won't you will be able once i give you the password you'll be able to get into the test you won't actually have to take a separate quiz this time Okay. You'll just have to answer the question once you're in the test. Okay, okay. So, because it'll only be for, since you've already told me that you guys are going to be honest about the whole course, this is just for this test specifically. Okay. So, alrighty. 
Okay, guys, I will see you on Wednesday morning. I do give another test right before yours. So if I'm um, later than I normally am, that's why. But I'll try to get in by 1055. All right. All right. All right. Thank you. See ya. See you. Bye-bye.